Um, hello, can you hear me? Okay, I'll probably offend all of you. Um, I had three, three main things that I wanted to say. Um, and to, to actually to preface that, I'll add a fourth, which is I don't think you should abandon the languages. If you abandon the languages, we don't have anything left. You're just destroying the, the, the high, entire, um, the entire discipline. You can't teach history without knowing something of the languages. You can't teach literature without knowing something of the languages, or we don't have classics. So to say it's inev inevitable is a real problem. And so that brings me to my first point, which is for 30 years I've heard you talk about the need for diversity and inclusiveness and reaching out and doing women in the ancient world and all sorts of other areas, which is fine. It's interesting, it's important. And people who can do that well should do it. But maybe we should start defending our discipline in of itself and saying it's Western civilization, it matters because it's the West. Western civilization it's is everything. a construct. It, okay, that's it matters. Construction. It, it's, it's important, particularly in its focus on liberty, democracy, and freedom. Okay. We need to stand up for it and say we are Western Civ up until 100 years ago. We, we aren't Western Civ. We're not. Then we might, as well, just, we might as well just shut down then. I taught Western okay. Civ for many, my many point years is, can as I a finish, historian. Can I finish my point? Okay, I know you're very important. You're all very important, but... That's not the point. We should defend our discipline to the administration, to whoever's giving money, to whoever's doing the hiring and say, look, we have value. We don't have to only do women's studies, only do ethnic studies, only do a balkanization of our, of our field. We have value in and of itself. And secondly, I think that you should, I know, shocking, maybe try doing the classic classes, classics, okay? To Professor Hines' point, which is really important, the kids that come in don't know anything. They don't know what's available. They don't know what classics is. They don't know what, they don't know anything about anything. And if you can give them a survey course, you can give them a freshman great books course and incorporate classics in that. You can expose them to the greats. That's really, really important. Okay, we don't teach Homer. We don't teach Cicero. I teach them every semester. In English? As a survey, yes, undergraduate I do. English. I have a history. Most PhD. departments don't. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. So I would like to no, respond. No, no. I, I looked I it really, up. I, I think it's time that we get to respond because I think you're. I, I think you're spreading a lot of falsities that I've. Uh, it's a it's a falsity to say why don't we teach Thucydides and Herodotus? I teach. Why don't we I teach? Just, finished teaching Thucydides in Greek for the Greek survey, and then I taught him in English. You cannot say across the board that I we aren't teaching I am saying across Thucydides. the board. The University of California, Davis, Professor Hexter isn't here. The classics in English courses consist of mythology and vocabulary, and that's it. Okay? Okay. okay. So I'm saying right. Cicero has value. Homer has value. Demosthenes Absolutely. has value because it will teach you about defending democracy. But people don't want that, okay? Right. You've listed all men um, the, of the authors that you would prefer us to read, by the way. Um, I, I am not say, a socialist, I, okay? I, I, I believe in merit. I believe that the right. journals okay. have articles on the basis of merit. R right. I, I don't you. look at you, the and color you, and of you the author. And you don't think that Sappho has merit. <laughs> okay, you may, have got you, you may have got your job because you're black, but I would prefer to think you got your job because of merit. Yeah, okay. we saw that coming. Say the truth. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, and I think we should allow other people to um, participate in this conversation at the risk of having this conversation so, uh, hijacked. But what I'll say simply is that if, if this vision of the classics is the vision that you find uh, uh, as a person. You're saying as, that, as, that, as, that as, people as, of color, black let me people, finish. I let you, people I, I let you, I let you, I let you finish. They're so not now I, I did not interrupt you once. So you are going to let me talk. <laughs> You are going to let someone who has been historically marginalized from the production of knowledge in classics talk. And here's what I have to say about the vision of classics that you've outlined. If that is, in fact, the vision that affirms you and your white supremacy, I want nothing to do with it. I hope the field dies that you've outlined and that it dies as swiftly as possible. And I hope, I fervently hope, that those of you in the room 
will take stock in consideration of what has happened. That, I, thought, I, thought that I, I thought that I would be able to speak. Right. Yeah. I, thought, I thought that well, I would be able to the, speak the, rather the than to be of, marginalized. In the interest of equity. But I obviously, you your field has decided that there's only a certain point of view. Yeah. Go for it. Go for it. There's uh, obviously a lot to respond.